Well, this was home this morning. This is where I woke up. Look at those mountains in the background up there. Isn't that gorgeous? It's really windy. I just woke up. <laughs> I just woke up and I, I slept in this neighborhood. I was in Okay, something I just never dawned on me coming to this part of uh, California and the Sierra Nevada, but <laughs> there's snow behind me and uh, I'm just heading out to the Tufa Towers here at Mono Lake to show you these and it's my first time here too. <laughs> but it's another beautiful day. I have a sweatshirt on. And my yoga pants and my high performance footwear. <laughs> Links are always below the videos. Um, but uh, yeah, today, just taking a little hike in the late spring of California and uh, enjoying the fresh air. It just, it smells wonderful and I'm so happy to bring you along today. water. Oh my goodness. Let's get up close to these. Isn't this wild? It looks like poured concrete, but this is just calcified minerals and salts. Wow. Tufa Towers and Groves are formed when underground sources of calcium-rich fresh water percolate up through the springs and volcanic vents to mix with carbonate-rich lake water. Travertine, Tufa, and Flowstone are composed of calcium carbonate, generally the mineral calcite. These deposits form on the land surface, in caves, and even in lakes. Travertine tends to form from warm to hot groundwaters. This reserve was established to preserve the spectacular Tufa Towers, calcium carbonate spires and knobs formed by interaction of freshwater springs and alkaline lake water. It also protects the lake surface itself as well as the wetlands and other sensitive habitat 
for the 1.2 million birds that feed and rest at Mono Lake each year. Mono Lake is a majestic body of water covering about 65 square miles. It is an ancient lake over 1 million years old, one of the oldest lakes in North America. It has no outlet. Through its long existence, salts and minerals have washed into the lake from the eastern Sierra streams. Fresh water evaporating from the lake each year has left the salt and minerals behind so that the lake is now about two and a half times as salty as the ocean and very alkaline. It's home to a lot of flies and I'm grateful that there's not thousands of flies here today because that would be gross. But the lake also is home to like a krill, a shrimp. And uh, that's why there's millions of birds that come here because they feed on the shrimp. I guess it's still a little bit too cold right now for them, but it's such a really interesting wonder. Good morning cats and kittens and feral souls and my YouTube darlings. Today is April 27th, 2023. It is five o'clock in the morning. I am parked up next to Topaz Lake here in Nevada and I am slowly making my way north and west to Oregon where I started my trip last October and I just wanted to thank all of you who have joined me on my channel and who have subscribed, liked and left a kind comment. I really appreciate all of you for being here and for joining the journeys. So if you like Honda Elements, if you like travel, if you like cooking and if you just enjoy general adventures then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love having you here. We are creating a community of travelers and adventurers and like-minded chefs, and it's been so fun. So again, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So much love. Okay guys, so I am at 9,000 feet in the Sierra Nevadas right now <laughs> and this is a wall of snow that has not melted yet. I just passed a, a highway entrance uh, back here uh, <laughs> and it was like that high. The snow was that high. Like I don't even know if they're going to get that highway open this year. They have had so much snow this year in the Sierra Nevadas, and I'm really happy about this. Hopefully that's gonna get the ground real wet this year and reduce the amount of uh, forest fires that happen. But I just thought I would show you that. Like, I heard somewhere, and now I don't know if this is true, and I will try and leave it uh, as I'm talking here, but I think they got over 100 feet of snow this year. Isn't that crazy? Wow, this is such a beautiful drive. Good morning. There's the snow wall. It's definitely higher than ninth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looks like they had a forest fire up here too at one point. Or maybe they had pine beetle. I'm not sure. Oops, stay on the road. So I found this pullout just to show you like, look, look how, isn't this insane? I mean, this wall is probably, I don't know, 12 feet high and it's April 27th. And I mean, look, there's nine. It's April 27th 
And this is how much snow has not melted yet. <laughs> Sierra Nevadas. Oh, guys, I wish we had smell -o vision This is spring in the lower mountains of California. This is Fiddletown. Um, I don't know if they make fiddles here or not, but look at this old building coming up here on the right. Let me just pop you off the tripod. Look at this old, you know, blacksmith wagon shop. I mean, this was part of the wagon trail. And then up here we have, it looks like a fiddle shop and there's a giant fiddle up on the roof and there's the firehouse. But uh, oh, the smell coming in the vehicle right now from all the spring blooms, the lilacs, the cherry blossoms, it is just so quaint and so charming. So I thought I would just show you this little tiny town in the mountains of California. I'm almost at my next destination for today. <laughs> You're not going to believe it. It's crazy. Okay. Something that I reflect on and consider often when I'm traveling over these old mountain roads is what it must have been like back in the 1800s to walk beside the wagons as well as ride in a wagon over these roads to go from one side of the Sierras to the other. I, I just, I think that that generation of people were so stout and so sturdy and uh, they really knew how to push through being uncomfortable, which is something that I have had to do this past year living out of the ninth element is be super uncomfortable to get to bliss. And today I get to enjoy this beautiful drive and just reflect on that. Oh, look at this old, oh, I love these covered bridges. Oh, it's closed. Oh, you know what? That's somebody's driveway. That's why it's closed. Okay. <laughs> we won't go there. We'll go back on the highway now. They're lucky they have a covered bridge. Head north on Amoruso Way. I will. Okay, thank you, OnStar. Continue on Fiddletown Road for four miles. Thank you. So yeah, I just uh, thought I'd share those thoughts with you and reflections from the road. Good morning. Got the windows open, the wind in my hair. <laughs> oh, this smell is intoxicating. Spring 2023 in the California mountains. Oh, it's so green. It smells so, so good. It reminds me of home back in British Columbia. Shushwap Highlands. Yeah. Oh my goodness, do you see those? That's Lupin. Lupine, Lupin. Uh-huh. Up high in the California hills. We've got some more lupin up here. Oh, it's one of my favorite, 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 favorite spring flowers. Oh yeah, look at this. Oh, so great. Oh, it's wagon trail days. Oh, they're having a little wagon trail. Bizarre is that? I was just reflecting on the folks that traveled over these mountains in the 1800s and in wagons and in Shenandoah there. They're having wagon trail days. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Well kids, this is where the filming ends. It's clothing optional. Oh my goodness. Well, good morning, cats and kittens and feral souls and my YouTube darlings. I am currently in the Nugget Market here in California, close to the Nudie Resort, but I'm clothed. And shopping. We're just checking out the alcohol section. And uh, I'm just going to take you through the store and just show you the wonderful things they have. Got a coupon today for these. 99 cents for one, so I got four. So yeah, very sweet, sweet market. We're just getting a few things. It's Friday at the resort. 
it's a martini night for me and they have a martini night there so I'm very excited to have martinis naked <laughs> and I love the tchotchke sections look at all these beautiful candles right by my host a candle my naked host The floor is exquisite. It's stained cement. And then here, we're in front of the fish section. So, and all the prepared fishes and things. Yeah, and we got a meat section. Okay, we've got some miso soup. I'm gonna try out these noodles, because I'm doing a cleanse next month. And I got some pho. Yeah, cool. Well, that was a successful trip. Now we're off to Trader Joe's. We got some kittens and feral souls and mice. Leave in the naked resort. Couldn't show you too much because I can't do it on film. Uh, Mama Sita and the casita here rinsing off the windshield for my road trip. Okay, Laguna del Sol. I spent four days here. Um, and <laughs> I live naked. Good to meet you. <laughs> Bye. Oh my goodness. A little traffic jam happening here. Anyways. You know, so yeah, they have a hot tub and it is not clothing optional. You're not allowed to wear clothes mostly. So that was really interesting. It was my first time going to a nudist resort. And I really liked it. I really appreciated the, um, the liberation of clothes. So we're exiting now. And here we go. Now I'm on my way. Today is April 30th. I'm on my way to Mount Shasta. And then tomorrow, May 1st, I will be back in Eugene. And I haven't seen Baby Ember or Isaac and Jaylena, which I'm really missing them as well. So that's the update. We'll just keep you posted as I travel. This is home tonight at the toes of Shasta. I am too tired to continue to drive up the mountain tonight and, uh, and find a spot off of one of the forestry roads. So I'm just gonna tuck into this neighborhood on this street in Mount Shasta. Well, good morning cats and kittens and feral souls and my YouTube darlings. I finally made it to Oregon and in in, in uh, honor of being home, I'm just going to show you something fun. Welcome back to Oregon, my darlings. Well, little update from the I-5 of Oregon. Wow, it's uh, it's really weird to be back here. Um, weather's still the same. It was cloudy and really foggy behind me here by Ashland. Um, I'm just before Roseburg. Uh, it's very green, as I remember, which is lovely. And it feels very strange to be back. Um, I'm having some mixed emotions about being back in Eugene, 
my tiny house. But again, I don't have anywhere to put it, so there's no sense on pulling the trigger on that one. So that's basically where we're at. I mean, today is June 1st, so Ember's birthday is tomorrow. Um, I'm back in Oregon. I'm so happy to be here. The weather is gorgeous. As you can see out my window here, the skies are blue and the temperature is perfect for van life. And I'm really excited to be going up to see the kids and kissing my baby and seeing my baby. There's, that's about all I have for you for this drive. So when I get to the scale, we'll just go over the scale and see how much ninth weighs right now. And uh, we'll just do a little filming maybe when I get to bus land and yeah. Okay, so it has been a year since I've done this and I'm gonna flip you around. This is the scale <clears throat> and uh, let's see if I can do this right here. Oh, let me back up a little bit. <laughs> Still 4,600 pounds. I even lost 40 pounds. Well, I gained 10, so I only lost 30. Okay, so 9 still weighs 4,600 pounds. Yeah, there it is. There it is right there. 4,600 pounds. Ugh. Okay. We're back in the Willamette National Forest, and I am happy to report that Look at this reservoir. That is beautifulness to my eyes. I love, I love seeing the reservoir full of water. And uh, we haven't had any rain here for the month of May. I don't think it rained at all. But uh, the snow melt up ahead at Diamond Peak is really low this year. So I don't know if you've been watching my channel since the beginning, but every year I camp at Crescent Lake and the snow this time of the year is, you know, about three quarters of the way down, but it's way, way down this year. So there's lots of snow up there. I don't even know if all the snow is going to melt. So it's going to be very cold swimming in Crescent Lake this summer. It feels so good to be back in the Pacific Northwest. Look at all of this green. It's Mindy again from the Ninth Element, and today I am at the Tufa Lakes and Tufa Towers at Mono Lake in Eastern California. And uh, today's video is brought to you by one of our sponsors to the channel. The channel couldn't happen without the sponsors, so I'm so grateful for them. And I just want to take this moment to show you a really cool product that was sent out to me. So thanks for watching and we'll get back to our video in just a minute or two or maybe three. So hang tight kids. <laughs> Isn't this cool? To another gear review here on the Ninth Element channel. I receive and review good gear and then I share that with you so that you too can enjoy the benefits of great gear. Today I'm reviewing the Zero Breeze Mark II 
portable air conditioner. Can you believe it? This is a portable air conditioner. This is the world's smallest air conditioner that actually works. You don't have to add ice or water to it. You simply just plug in the battery to the unit and turn it on and chill. This unit weighs 28 pounds altogether. It has its own portable battery source. This battery weighs 12 pounds. I was able to get six hours runtime on a low setting for this battery. You can also plug it into the grid. You can also plug it into other portable batteries that are rated for 240 watts or more. The runtime from those portable batteries will depend just on that battery. So you'll want to experiment with your other portable batteries if you're not using this battery on it or the grid or electricity or a generator to run it. This unit is 2300 BTUs, which is much lower than those small window units, which are 15,000 BTUs and higher. And it just goes up from there. So that makes this a very efficient portable air conditioner. So I did try this unit out yesterday and I'm gonna take us back to yesterday and just show you how I set this unit up. This unit is perfect for car camping, tent camping, and RVing. But I want you to keep in mind, overall, this unit is meant to keep me cool versus my space around me cool. Because 40 square feet's not very big. Like if you see the ninth element, 35 square feet. But when it's hot, any kind of comfort is a welcome. So I am so excited to have this on board, my Honda Element Tiny Camper. I did try this unit out yesterday and I'm gonna take us back to yesterday and just show you how I set this unit up and how it did cool my space. So out of the box, you get a user manual for the air conditioner and it also comes with its own portable lithium battery so I can run this unit for four and a half to five hours off of that battery. This is where the air blows out. That's the tubing that goes in there. This is the in air and out air and it goes on the back. Comes with an AC adapter, a remote control, which I always laugh living in my van, although the remote controls do come in handy. And then this is the cordage that goes between the battery and the air conditioner. So I'm gonna put this all together, but first I need to figure out how I'm going to exhaust it out my window. The packaging that the air conditioner comes in, so this is, this is half of the packaging for the tubing and the unit. And then this is the lid, and you can see there are these holes that you can actually punch out, and there's extra width on here. I have started trimming one on the back of the tailgate and I thought I would just go in real time with you and just show you how I figured out how to put one in the window or not. We'll see by the end of this video. But this is an air conditioner for vehicles by Zero Breeze. Thank you Zero Breeze for sponsoring today's video. Gotta love having a tailgate work area. This is a, a heat shield. This is a um, shade covering for the window on the passenger side of the car. And I'm going to cut out a template using two of these pieces of the foam for my intake and my exhaust. Now I'm not sure why the intake for the fresh air coming in and the hot air from the unit are, is so close together. And you know, we'll troubleshoot through this together. And today's uh, tailgate charcuterie is uh, fennel salami, Munster cheese, and bugles. <laughs> and wine. Cheers. I would use my kitchen knives, but as a chef and always having nice knives, 
I don't think kitchen knives should be used as tools for construction. It just makes them dull. And that's how you lose a finger. Okay. Now to figure this out. I'm facing out the window shade in the styrofoam. Not very hard to do the styrofoam. Perforates pretty easy. Okay, so then I'm going to cut that out with this knife. Pretty easy. So I'm just ripping apart this piece to see what I can use in the final, the final blind. I use the length of this piece for right here and I'm going to use this one for this corner and black tape to duct tape it together. I've never installed an air conditioner before. I've lived in very few places where I've needed them. And, well, yeah, it lived. And, of course, on vacation they're there, but I didn't install them at the hotel. And there it is. So I'm going to finish taping up these bits. I'm taping the edges. And then I'll pop it in the window and see how it fits. I'm a whiz with duct tape, screws, and glue. I make it look really easy. I mean, come on, look at that trim job. Look at that. It looks like it came from a professional air conditioning store. Oh, ninth element air conditioning installations. Okay, let me finish this. Okay, these were today's tools. The shade to use as a template, black roller tape, box cutter, pen. There's the finished product. You know, there's a few gaps around it. I didn't do super awesome. And the hose will fit around this hanging thing. And I plan to put the air conditioner right here. So let me just get that set up. On the front here is where you turn it on. You look for the play up, we hear a sound on rocket mode. It says it's 80 out. This is where the air comes out. It's not very loud, right? You can hear it ramping up. Yeah, so this one, this one's blowing the hot air out from this intake, which is bringing in the air from here. There, it's clipped in. Intake, outtake. I need to hook those into the window in ninth. And uh, is it light? Well, not really, but oh, I'm also not very strong. So I'm going to set this in here like this, and then hopefully these will reach the window. Oh, I guess if the window's closed, it doesn't. Okay, pardon me, I have to shut the door. side and put these in. Put outtake 
Okay, it's set up. Let me see if this works. I feel like I'm in the space center. Oh. Of course, all the knobs are on the other side. Okay, hang on. Battery is charged. Oh, there we go. It's on. And power. Oh. Now I can hook that hose up to this one and direct it in the back, which is what I'm going to do. But I, for the purpose of doing this review and this video, I just wanted to give you a really rough idea of how to install it in your car. Oh yeah, there's cold air. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> I have been sweating my patootie off today in the forest, in the Willamette National Forest. So thank you Zero Breeze for the portable air conditioner. It's already down to 65. Oh, that feels amazing. I should close the car up. That's amazing. Down to 64. Oh my goodness. I think this could work in the ninth element. Thank you again to Zero Breeze for supplying me with this portable air conditioner to review for you on my channel. If you would like to get your hands on one of these amazing portable air conditioning units, see below this video in the description, click on see more and look for the link to this portable air conditioning unit. Uh, is this thing on? Yay! What's up, oh, baby? Oh, what's up? Oh, it's been nine and a half months. Hi, Shatters. We could have had another I'm baby back. in that time. We could have. Uh, you want me to get you a chair? You... No, she's going to sit down because I'm just with her. Oh, okay. And Ember was acting a little crazy. Oh, well, then okay. come back and then I can give Ember her birthday. Wow. Oh, I'm back. Look at that. <laughs> we were... We weren't sure, like, if you were trying to, like, what you were Be doing. hiding? Yeah. Well, no. Because no. they, they seen you roll in. Did they? Yeah. Because it was like this. Oh, and yeah. It, and everybody's like, Mindy. I was like, oh, snap. I don't know if Mindy wants people to know she's here. Oh, no, of course. Because I'm going to be at the birthday tomorrow. Yeah. So how would we not know? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good to be back in Oregon.